<clears throat> How much is it? When you look at your cupboards, your closets, the places where you store things, how much is enough? <coughs> when we hear the story of the Exodus, we hear the story of the people of Israel, and they have left Egypt, and they are on their journey to wherever God is going to take them. Now, prior to the passage today that was read, we heard about their thirst. They became thirsty, which is natural, isn't it? You know, we would die first from dehydration before we would from hunger. So thirst became a major issue, and they began to complain against God for bringing them out into this wilderness so that they could die. And God says to Moses, take your staff and go strike this rock that I will And water came forth. God provided the water out of a rock and the people thirst no longer. But now we've got the thirst taken care of. Well, what about my hunger? Yeah. And they reflect back on what was in Egypt and all the places that they had where they could eat and have wonderful food. The fact that they were slaves didn't seem to matter as much as they were going to complain about their empty stomachs. I don't have enough to eat. I'm hungry. Almost sounds like little kids complaining to mom, saying, you know, can't I have a snack? Can't I have something to eat? This, this dynamic of stress back and forth. And so they complain to Moses. God is not providing for them. God knows their needs. And so they are provided for with manna, which comes from heaven. And they are told to go out every day and collect all that they need for the day. And don't take extra. God knows the tendency of all of us. Uh, if, if I'm going to put one can in the, in the cupboard to say, maybe I should put two in just to be sure. We always want to gather some more, some extra, just in case, because I don't know if I'm going to get some tomorrow. But God said, I told you so. And when they collected extra, that second day's supply molded and became unusable. They went out the next day and there was more manna for them. Trusting in God, they would have enough. That God would provide for them, as God said, would be done. And so they had manna from heaven. Manna was to make bread. And then they had quail. And they had all that they needed. And when they needed it. No storing up in the cupboards. Lots of extra. Trust. Believing through faith that God will provide as God has said would be done. Mm -hmm. 
when Jesus fed the 5,000, the 4,000, the 7,000, take your choice of whichever story you want to read. Everybody ate and was filled, remember? Five loaves, two fish, 4,000 men plus women and children. However many were gathered together, they all ate and were filled. They had sufficient. When Jesus was ready to leave and he sent his disciples ahead, what did the crowd do? They wanted to know where Jesus was going. Why? Because they wanted to be with Jesus the next day to get some more bread and some fish. Right? I'm going to, if you're going there, I'm going to follow you. We're going to do it. But Jesus left in a boat. The point is, the people were not trusting that God would provide alone. And so the tendency was to, how much can I collect? How much can I hoard to be ready for whatever comes next? The story of the rich young man who came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, what must I do to have eternal life? Now, first of all, it's not what he does. It's not what any of us does, but it's how we live. And what did Jesus say to the rich young man? Well, first, do you follow the law of Moses? Do you follow the Torah in your life? Okay, good. Check that one off. Now, let's talk about what you have. The rich young man with all of his wealth. I want you to go and sell what you have, give to the poor, and come follow me. God knew what was going on inside the rich young man's heart. And what does it say? He went away sad because he had many things. He had great wealth. And that was more important to him than what he was being told he could do to have eternal life. He couldn't take the step of trusting God. And that's what whatever. So how much is enough? How much does each one of us need to have? And what do we do with what we do have? Are there people who need it, who are in need greater than we? Can we share what we have? What can we do with what we are given by God in the way of our time, our talent, and our treasure? How can we spread the kingdom of God, the abundance of God? If we live in scarcity, it is fear. Fear that I will not have enough for tomorrow. And so I have to hold on to whatever I have. And Jesus says to us, trust in God. Know that you will be cared for by God and share with others from what you have been given. The opportunity is there. We have enough. We share it with those who don't. Amen.